Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day here at the Chateau, and um, it's a Sunday morning, nine o'clock, and we're on our way to a little dog show. And I'm quite excited about it because Billy brought his beautiful, they um, champions in France, his um, beautiful Pomeraniums, and I just love them. Let's turn you around and I'll show you what they look Here like. Here they all are. And they're all ready for their show. Goodness, look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? Look. Oh, voila. And here is Billy in his beautiful shirt. And his son, Timothy. And he is coming. They're all going to show me what to do. And I'm going to help them at the show. I'm so excited. Catch you later. And here we have Tilo, who belongs to Christina. He's a darling little boy. And um, he's introducing himself to Prada. And we're going to take Prada out of the cage and start grooming her now. Well, we've got Billy. He's taking Prada, his favorite dog, Pomeranian, and he's busy preparing it for grooming now. I just love watching him groom his puppies and the, this dog, Prada. He just loves his animals. It's just amazing. He's like a little maestro when he's working with them. And we've put Prada back in the cage now. And we're getting her ready for the show. And here we have Scandal. And she's a gorgeous little Pomeranian. And she's getting ready for the show as well as the little black one, which is called Cerise. And she controls everybody here. And she is nine months old and she just snaps away. To my delight, Billy asked me to show Prada off and I walked up to the judge's table with Prada and we put Prada onto the table and the judges were asking me quite a few questions and uh, Billy informed me of all these questions. Now just a little bit background, Billy breeds these dogs and he's got top champions and all three of these dogs are champions of his breed that he's got. I'm going to leave his email down below and um, you can contact him if you're interested in purchasing a Pomeranian and he will help you along um, with the training and everything of the dogs and he is and re properly registered at shows and he wins all the time and he really really is amazing at the way he handles his dogs with such care and such love. Right, so now that she's asked me to take him around the course and she's judging Prada now so we're walking along there and then I had to turn around and come back and there we go I made a few mistakes but Prada didn't and then she's asked me here to, t to take him again and she's going to look at him from the side uh, it's, uh, I keep saying him, it's a girl. Just take her around. And there we go. Back to the judges. And then they were sitting and deliberating. And I was getting excited. And she told me afterwards he was excellent. <laughs> and we got the certificates afterwards. He was best of show, best of group. And the other two dogs were all in the excellent categories. Absolutely wonderful. Oui, oui. Tu, tu, tu. Non, on l'a besoin marcher. Two little visitors here at the back door coming to say hello. I hope you can see this. Is that just the leaves are falling now and autumn is coming from the tree. I'm on my way taking a sly, slow walk to the post box after I've just had COVID and I'm strengthening myself up. It's, um, it was bad, but I'm back to normal now. So hopefully everything will be good again. 
Well, there's been some people that have put some questions forward and I'm going to answer some of those questions that um, we have, that I've received. So without further ado, we'll go on to the first question. Will the winter kitchen fit? And that was from Michelle Dennis, 2305. Michelle, yes, it will fit. I'll put a picture of it. It's, it's in situ. Um, I'm still busy decorating it, but I'll just put a picture and show you that it has been fitted in. So yes, the small night kitchen will fit. Um, and then Betty, Chandler 341 asked, why a winter kitchen? Right, in a huge house like this, um, what we usually do is we have an apartment. So we've made the east wing into an apartment, which is two bedrooms with two en suites, a lounge and the kitchen. So that will be what we use in the winter. The rest of the house gets shut down and we don't use it at all. And we only open it up for the summer. That's, I hope that answers your question. And then the, sec, the third question, Kelly Hill, 3550, how did I meet Bridget? Well, I met Bridget last year um, and I came to stay at her B&B in um, Rillac and it was such a pretty cozy little B&B and we just knocked it off as friends immediately and she and I have been haven't stopped talking to you and we've just had such a wonderful time chatting and planning my um, trip back to the um, to France and then um, that was in March when I came over with Jeff and Annie and we just enjoyed staying there. But unfortunately, while we were staying there, her husband passed away. And it was a traumatic time for her, as well as we were sad because we'd met, I only met him the night before. Um, when I came the first time, um, her husband was ill in bed. And then um, the second time I came with Jeff and Annie, he was fine, he was walking around and he was having a wonderful time. And um, the night we sat chatting and drinking Prosecco and just um, giving him the plans. And then um, the next morning we left to come to the chateau to clean, start cleaning it up and everything. And um, at about three o'clock, she texted me to say that um, her husband's in hospital. And I said, oh, really? And I hope everything goes all right, I said. And then 3.30, she texted he'd passed away um so that was a traumatic time for her and they were married for 48 years they were married and um anyway so he passed away and then i came back um a week later because i came with the trucks to move in and i stayed with her for six weeks to keep her company while I was cleaning up and moving all the boxes around in the chateau and everything. And um, then you, things, one thing led to another and we were really enjoying each other's company and she was very helpful to me and um, she had to leave her house because um, something disastrous happened and um, she had to move out of the house and she had nowhere to go. And I said, good God, I have this big chateau here. Why don't you come and live with me? And she was so excited about it and she's really taken it to heart and she moved in with me. And she's um, moved in and about officially in July. So she's only been here about two, three months and she's been helping me extremely. And she's really happy and she's comfortable here as well as I am comfortable because before I was working at, I, I, had, I was working as a hotelier. I had my own hotel in Wales, um, a five star hotel. And um, it was a very lonely existence because all I was doing is working and waking up and serving the guests and cleaning rooms and doing the shopping and the washing and the ironing and back and so it was going on 
And hence, this is the reason why I also changed my life, because I, I just didn't want to carry on like that. I didn't have time to meet with friends or talk with friends or anything. Um, I was just working and just liaising with the guests. And to me, that wasn't really a life. And then the winter months were very um, cold in Wales and wet and you know, I, I knew a few friends, but you can't keep visiting them every day. So most of the time I was um, on my own. And having Bridget here has just been wonderful. And we do things together and we have so much laughs and we really enjoy each other's company. So uh, yeah, and it's been over a year now that I've known her. And um, so and the things are working out great with her living here. So that is how I met Bridget. Then Lucy Auburn, she asked for a short bio of yourself. Okay, just a quick one. Um, I grew up in South Africa. My father was a professional tennis coach and he coached a whole lot of South African tennis stars. Johan Crick was one of his protégés as well. Um, I grew up in a tennis environment with my father. My mother was an artist and um, she, she did very well. And then we, my dad decided to move to Austria um, in 1974 and that's when I moved with them to Austria and I went to school there um, to Handels Academy in um, Austria and um, I learned to speak German there and everything but I wasn't very happy there having grown up on a farm in Africa and living in a flat in um, Austria with all the rules and regulations I asked my dad if I could maybe go to London and go or to Paris. That's right. I went to Paris. So I went to learn French in, at, in Paris and my parents helped me to get there. And I did my I, I, le I learned French and then I decided to go to London and I worked there in London for a while until I decided to go to South Africa back again. And I lived there for 20 years. I became a pilot, I had my own flying school, I had my own airline and I ended up working for Monash University that was based in Johannesburg. Um, I was um, one of the um, directors of the uh, Center for Aviation Law in Africa and I tried to get it established in Kenya as well and, um, and work with United Nations and um, yeah, I, I was really heavily involved. Um, and then one day I, I said to my um, two daughters, I said to them, I think we're gonna move to England. Um, your opportunities, because things were getting a bit rough in South Africa. And we moved to um, the UK, to England. And um, I was working in the aviation industry here and um, flying and doing whatever I have to do. And then I decided I've had enough of all this. All my life I was flying and, you know, war zones in Africa and uh, food aid and everything. I decided I wanted to buy a hotel. So I bought a hotel in um, Wales, in Llandavri. And I made it into a five-star hotel and it was a great success, but I found out I was very lonely there. And I've moved now and I was looking already, oh, I'd say about 10 years ago, I was looking for a house in, in France. And then suddenly this house came up and um, I, I, I fell in love with it. It was exactly what I was looking for. It wasn't over pretentious. It was just a simple chateau. And it was, uh, uh, you know, the layout was just so perfect for me. You had the um, sit 
the salon, as they call it, which is the sitting room, moving on to the dining room, and then across the, uh, the entranceway is the library. And everything was just so perfectly laid out, and everything was just the right space and size for me that I wanted. And this is how I got to where I am now. That just gives you a short bio of myself. Um, then Patty T. Are you going to make your home into a B&B? Yes, I do want to have three rooms here and make it into a B&B. But it won't be next year, it'll be the following year. Because I want everything to be um, beautifully finished off. And then when people come here, I don't want them seeing half the stuff as being under construction that they've got to climb over places. Um, so therefore, I'm trying to get uh, the bedrooms fixed up. I'm trying to get the designs in place. But the major part of the of the chateau is that I had to get get the electricity, the water, the faucetic done, and the roof had to be made sound. And as far as we are now, we've got um, the roof is nearly finished, and uh, the faucetic has been finished now, as I'm speaking to you today, and that has all been done. And we've got all the grey water going in, um, going into a tank, and the and obviously the sewage goes into the septic tank. And we've got water, a big huge tank in the ground that collects water as well for us, so that we can water the gardens and everything, and not use um, council water. And we just collect the rainwater. So that's all been fitted. Um, we also trying to get all around the chateau, all the um, gravel done properly and just tidying up everything. Um, and we're decorating at the present moment as well. So there's quite a lot going on. And um, so, yeah, we've still got a lot of electrics to do. We've done a quarter of the electrics up on the first floor which is our apartment we've started we started downstairs we've done the back kitchen the pantry area and we've got outside lights now and security and um, the toilet has been done downstairs and now we're moving down the hallway into the entrance halls and into the sitting room dining room library and then the last part of it will be the kitchen, the big kitchen that we're building, that we're going to be doing next year. So for this year, I'm just going to get the electrics done downstairs finished. And then next year, we'll start up with the bedrooms that I want to make into bed and breakfast bedrooms. And then um, um, that, that's as far as I can go. I, I, I have to see what I'm going to do next after that. So yes, those are the few questions that were posed to me. Um, if anybody else has got any other questions, please write them down at the bottom. And after every vlog, I'll have a little Q&A and answer as many questions as you want to know. So thank you so much for watching. And I, I truly apologize for being so long. I was hit down with COVID and it was horrible. And I'm slowly recovering now I'm still a bit tired, but I'm pulling myself towards myself and just getting positive and starting to work myself up with the decorations and enjoying the chateau at the moment. So without further ado, I wish everybody um, a wonderful week ahead. Until the next time. Bye for now.